Did you know that almost 5 million Australians suffer with migraines? And for many of them, they're chronic migraines. And that means they have more than 15 migraines in a year. If you or someone you know suffer from migraines, you're going to find this really interesting. Hi, I'm Mary Lee. I'm a clinical nutritionist and workplace wellbeing consultant. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about migraines. So, as I said, over 5 million Australians actually experience or have migraines every year. Of that, 71% of the people who experience migraines are actually women. And with those women, 86% of the 71% are in fact women of working age. So Deloitte did a study uh, in 2018 and they worked out that the cost of migraines in Australia comes to the tune of $35 billion. That includes not only the health costs, but also the costs or loss costs of productivity in workplaces. So what I wanted to do is just have a quick conversation with you about things that can trigger migraines and what you can do to either reduce or possibly uh, get rid of your migraines. So one of the reasons that migraines are so hard to treat is because uh, they're caused by different things for different people. In fact, even the nature of the type of migraines that people have um, can be different. Some people, their migraines are caused by vasoconstriction, others are caused by vasodilation. So one of the ways that we, or that I often um, try and understand what type of migraine am I dealing with when I'm talking to my clients, is I ask them if having a coffee makes it worse or better. Because for many people, uh, too much caffeine can actually be a trigger for a migraine. Whereas for others, um, if they feel a migraine coming on, they actually have a cup of coffee or some type of caffeinated beverage and it can actually help to stop the migraine in its tracks. So, start to think about just you know what type of migraine do you have? Now there are other causes outside of um, food, and I will be talking mostly about the food triggers today. But some of the other triggers for uh, migraines are environmental, so lights, smell, noise. Um, Ergonomics, so um, the, our biomechanics can affect uh, our, whether migraines are triggered or not. Uh, so if you are working for long periods of time and your uh, desk or workstation isn't set up correctly and you are um, you know, putting pressure or, or strain on your neck or your eyes because of the lighting or um, just the setup, then that can actually be a contributor to migraines along with other types of headaches, but specifically we're talking about migraines today. Uh, some people are actually triggered when the temperatures change, so um, it could be a severe or a sudden drop in, in um, the temperature um, or a sudden increase in the temperature can actually trigger people's migraines. Uh, there are a couple of other things that can cause, um, or that I found um, when we're working with people, that uh, we have identified that their migraines um, may have started when they were very young or after living in certain places. And so for some people, what we do is actually look at heavy metal toxicity uh, and the impact that that's had on their bodies, um, which can actually be a reason that people are chronic sufferers of migraines. Uh, for many women, they will find that there is a cyclic nature to their migraines and that's often associated with hormonal fluctuations. So if you're a woman that suffers with chronic migraines, you might want to actually just check and, and keep a diary or um, mark out the days and actually see whereabouts in your cycle it is that you have your, have your migraines and uh, start to understand what's going on there. Uh, for other people, migraines can be triggered by their medications. So if you are taking medications for other uh, conditions, then you may need to go back and talk to your general practitioner or the person who prescribed those um, 
medications to you and let you know, let them know that they are actually giving you migraines and that there are other you know, side effects that are happening. Migraines are often associated um, or are another um, I guess symptom of people who have any uh, gastrointestinal issues. So uh, along with migraines if you suffer with any type of um, bloating or uh, gastric discomfort or um, you might suffer with uh, IBS or IBD then the migraines are often associated with any um, anything that's going wrong in time inside the gastrointestinal tract uh, and then that's where we kind of move into the food intolerance side of things uh, some people have food intolerances and so when they have um, a too much of a load of certain types of foods then that can actually trigger a migraine as well now some of the triggers from a food perspective can be really difficult to nail because it may not be the same thing every time. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the triggers that um, are associated from a food perspective. So the first one is, um, which I've already sp spoken about, is caffeine. So if you're having um, excessive amounts of caffeine and caffeine is one of the things that can trigger your migraines, then you may want to cut back uh, or drink more water or you know, try a decaf or maybe drink a green tea instead um, and alternate so that you're not having as much caffeine. Some people when they decide to cut back on caffeine they switch to other drinks which are actually caffeinated. So many people don't realise that chocolate or hot chocolate has also um, got a lot of caffeine in it as well. So um, just be careful with what you're switching to if you decide to reduce your caffeine. And when you're reducing your caffeine, you also want to do that slowly because uh, going cold turkey can also bring on a migraine. And if not a migraine, and uh, you, if not a migraine, but you are a, um, a quite a drink, do drink quite a lot of coffee, then it can bring on um, withdrawal headaches. So the second one I mentioned was chocolate. Uh, chocolate in any of its forms, whether you're having it as hot chocolate as a drink, uh, if you're having chocolate milkshakes or if you are having uh, chocolate bars, they are often triggers um, for many people uh, who suffer with migraines. Uh, and then there are some more obscure things that you may not be aware of. So any aged or fermented foods. So when I talk about aged or fermented foods, those are the foods, things like um, uh, kimchi, kombucha, uh, if you are an eater of sauerkraut, those are all fermented foods. And for some people, as much as they're actually very healthy, can be a trigger for migraines. The other things that are aged or fermented, of course, is cheese. Uh, and the, the older or mature, more mature a cheese is, or the more those cheeses have moulds on them, then those can often be triggers for people as well. Um, there's also something else called chronic inflammatory response syndrome that can cause people's um, migraines. And that's actually, uh, again, it's an environmental one, but I mention it because it's often people who um, struggle with um, molds and cheeses um, are actually, that's a, a food response to an environmental issue in terms of maybe mold disease in the house or um, any other type of uh, chronic inflammatory response that they may be having due to environmental issues. So maybe have a look at that as well. But going back to the food, uh, the food triggers, the other one um, in terms of fermented and aged foods are alcohol. So people may not want to hear that alcohol could be a trigger for their um, for their migraines, but definitely beer, wine, and bubbles are um, uh, fermented and aged, and those can uh, trigger migraines. And then, of course, there's the old uh, additives and preservatives. So. Uh, Minimising additives and preservatives is actually really easy to do. Just eat real food. So eat whole foods, fruit and vegetables, um, foods that have been minimally processed. If your food comes from the inner aisles within the supermarket, the chances are it's going to have things like sulfites, nitrites, nitrates, um, 
it could have monosodium glutamate, so MSG, uh, or aspartamine, um, which is a uh, sugar uh, replacement. So diet sodas or any type of diet food or low sugar food um, can often be uh, triggered by the alternatives uh, that they're using. And, and, and for, for a lot of those um, eight foods or eight foods, so sulfites and nitrites, um, they are, can be very um, excitatory inside the brain and that can cause um, their migraines to trigger so MSG is an interesting one because often people know about MSG and how it can trigger migraines, but they may not realize that uh, MSG is actually naturally found in a lot of foods and it's particularly found in foods that are very concentrated. So tomatoes have MSG in them and in fact tomatoes are a trigger for some people in terms of their migraines. But uh, you may be able to eat a sliced tomato in your sandwich every now and again or maybe um, even a little bit of passata on, on your pasta. But if you were having uh, a um, concentrated tomato puree or a tomato paste, um, the levels of MSG in those can be really quite high. In other foods that have a very strong umami or savoury flavour, so miso, which is also fermented, um, mushroom pastes, uh, bone broths, is, and again, all um, those can actually be very, very healthy foods for some people. But for migraine sufferers, they could actually be the, the reason that you're suffering with a lot more migraines than you need to. So just have a think about, um, maybe look into that a little bit more around um, naturally um, occurring MSG in foods. So there's a couple of others, um, things like bananas can actually be a trigger for some people, nuts can be a problem for some people, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's and you might go, well, I have I had a banana the other day and that didn't trigger a a migraine. But what can often happen, and if we talk about the food intolerance thing again, is where um, it's not actually about the individual food; it's about all of the foods that could be triggers. Um, actually in a day and it's about load so if you had a banana uh, in for breakfast but then you had um, a salad for lunch uh, that didn't have any tomatoes in it and you might have had uh, steak and vegetables for dinner uh, with with you know no sauce or maybe a mushroom sauce that may not be enough to actually trigger you but if you had um, a bit of last night's pizza for breakfast and then a coffee and then at mid-morning you had another coffee and then at lunchtime you ordered in some takeaways and um, uh, and then for dinner you weren't really that hungry so you thought you'd just have um, cheese and maybe some um, a meat platter like salami and ham and things like that those foods have all got really high levels of nitrates and nitrites and sulfates and sulfites and um, can be triggers for people. So think about the load. So what are some of the things that you can do to uh, reduce that? Well obviously look at all of those things and maybe look at removing them from your diet, um, doing an elimination diet or something of the like to actually help to identify what your triggers are. The other thing I would recommend is drink plenty of water. Uh, the water is going to help flush uh, any toxins out of your body and it also helps your body to process anything that you are consuming to help to uh, you know get it through your system so that it's not backing up and obviously overstimulating um, whatever it is that's causing your particular migraines. Uh, plenty of movement so exercise is also another way of making sure that you are moving your body and getting the blood pumping because when we are moving our bodies our heart pumps our blood but our movement pumps our lymph and lymph is really important for helping to detoxify the body so make sure that you're actually getting plenty of movement and drinking plenty of water now it's very easy to say this but stress is a huge um, trigger for people who suffer with migraines and uh, one of the reasons for that is that stress uses up some very very important uh, nutrients in our body uh, that help to reduce anxiety or any type of 
um, overstimulatory um, for the nervous system. And so if we uh, experience a lot of stress, then we're going to need more of these particular nutrients, which is magnesium, B vitamins, and vitamin C, and to another extent, zinc. And so uh, if you can reduce your stress levels, and sometimes it's not about reducing the stressor, it's about changing our perception around how we're experiencing that stress, then that can go a long way to reduce your migraines. If you're not able to reduce your stress levels, then think about uh, including foods into your diet that can actually help to boost your levels of magnesium and B vitamins. Um, if that's too hard and uh, eating a whole food diet just isn't for you, then there is always a way that you can take supplementation to actually help bolster any deficiencies that you have. So there's just a few ideas on what you can do to help um, identify what could be your triggers for migraines and to look at ways of reducing um, the impact of migraines for you. If anything I've talked about today is of particular interest, then by all means, feel free to contact me and ask me a few questions about that. Otherwise, I would recommend that you go and talk to your um, general practitioner or a clinical nutritionist and find out more about how they can help you to identify uh, what might be causing your uh, migraines and how you can work to reduce and hopefully eliminate those from uh, affecting you anymore.